A gigantic hole in the ozone layer is formed over the Antarctic. You can find out what this means for us and what role one of the most violent volcanic eruptions in recent years could play in this video. So be sure to stay tuned until the end, and if you like it, I'd be galactically happy to get a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you friends, and welcome. I love ozone. Funny way to start a video, I know, but it's true because ozone plays an immensely important role in my survival. Ozone is a naturally occurring gas in the stratosphere, the second layer of our atmosphere. The ozone layer fulfills a crucial role by protecting the Earth's surface from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. As everyone knows after a day at the beach without sunscreen, UV radiation is harmful in excess and can cause sunburn, and in the worst cases, even skin cancer eye damage and other health problems. Without the protective effect of the ozone layer, life on Earth would be seriously endangered because the sun is constantly bombarding us with this UV radiation. So in principle, we are under a protective shell that protects us from certain death. And if this protective shell were to disappear, even sunscreen with a factor of 100 would be of no help. It is all the more worrying when this ozone layer becomes porous and areas form in which UV radiation can reach the surface of our beautiful planet without any protective resistance. But that doesn't mean that every hole in the ozone layer is totally dramatic and unnatural. Ozone holes are in themselves quite normal phenomena. They form and close every year in a cycle that is heavily dependent on temperature changes and wind conditions in the stratosphere. The maximum expansion of the ozone hole over the Antarctic, for example, normally occurs between mid-September and mid-October. During this period, it reaches its greatest expansion before shrinking again. This annual process is a natural part of the so-called ozone cycle. Just as the sea ice around Antarctica grows and retreats each year, so does the ozone hole over the continent. I can already hear some of you saying this indignantly. Yeah, there's no problem then, dude. Boring. Unfortunately, by the end of 2023, the hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica will have reached an extent that can no longer be explained by the ozone cycle. Here you can see the extent of the Antarctic ozone hole since 1979, and we can see that there really was a monster ozone hole in 2023. We know this extent very precisely from observations by the Sentinel-5P satellite of the ESA, the European Space Agency. This is the first Copernicus satellite to monitor our atmosphere using an advanced multispectral imaging spectrometer called TROPOMI. TROPOMI detects the fingerprints of atmospheric gases in different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum to map a wide range of pollutants more accurately and with higher spatial resolution than ever before. And these data show that the ozone hole reached an area of about 26 million square kilometers on September 16th last year making it one of the largest seasonal holes ever observed. To give you a better idea, this means that the ozone hole over Antarctica has grown to three times the size of Brazil. Now we just have to work it out in soccer fields, but I'm too bad at math. If any of you can do the math, please let me know the answer in the comments. Based on what we already know, such a large hole in the ozone layer is not exactly ideal. And the question arises, why has the Antarctic ozone hole suddenly become so astonishingly huge? And the answer could lie in a completely different part of the world. In the South Pacific, in January 2022, there was a massive eruption of the Hunga Tonga underwater volcano. The eruption I'm looking at here was truly gigantic by any standards. According to NASA, the eruption column was up to 58 kilometers high and thus reached into the atmospheric layer of the mesosphere. This made it the highest eruption cloud ever observed from space. In addition to ash, volcanoes emit a variety of gases, including sulfur dioxide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, and carbon dioxide, i.e. ECO2. These gases can spread in the atmosphere and influence the climate. Sulfur dioxide can form aerosols in the stratosphere that reflect sunlight and can lead to a short-term cooling of the Earth's surface. 
Above all, however, a lot of water vapor was blown into the atmosphere. Water vapor sounds unspectacular at first, but in these quantities it causes a lot of chaos. The stratosphere is the second layer of the Earth's atmosphere, and it normally only contains very small amounts of water vapor. However, we know that water vapor can contribute to the formation of polar stratospheric clouds, which consist of tiny ice particles, and which in turn create an environment in which chemical reactions can take place that accelerate the depletion of ozone. So in simpler terms, the more water vapor in the atmosphere, the less ozone. Anchi Innes, lead scientist of the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service says, the water vapor may have led to increased formation of polar stratospheric clouds, where chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, can react and accelerate ozone depletion. In addition to this factor, there are also so-called long-lived ozone-depleting substances, ODS for short, in the stratosphere, which have mainly been brought there by human activities. Since the introduction of the Montreal Protocol in 1987, which was intended to minimize new emissions in the long term, these ODS concentrations in the stratosphere have fallen drastically, and there are clear signs that the ozone layer is recovering. This is working so well that the ozone layer will return to pre-industrial levels in the next few decades, and anomalous ozone holes will be a thing of the past. Klaus Siener, ESA mission manager for Copernicus Sentinel-5P says, based on the Montreal Protocol and the decline in anthropogenic, ozone-depleting substances, scientists currently predict that the global ozone layer will return to its normal state by around 2050. That's good news. It also means that the Antarctic ozone hole will shrink and that the current size was more of an anomaly due to the Hunga Tonga eruption. Of course, this could also happen in the future because no political agreement in the world can prevent volcanic eruptions. Although I have no doubt that there are politicians who think they can, I'll keep you up to date on how the Antarctic ozone hole is progressing, but you can only do that if you subscribe to my channel. I know from YouTube statistics that more than half of the viewers have not subscribed at all. It's absolutely free, you'll never miss another galactic video and you'll help me to keep the channel growing. So everyone, press the subscribe button. Thank you very much. As always, check out my other videos that are displayed here and also check out the Astro Shop if you want to support my work. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care friends.